What if Harry Potter, instead of using Expelliarmus or whatever, went to the gym? So anyway, Mashal is about a guy in a magical world who, instead of using magic like everyone around him, decides to use his muscles. If you heard me say that and didn't immediately think, that's the funniest premise ever conceived, I apologize, but the very core of our values as human beings are irreconcilably different. Even going beyond the premise though, the show is an absolute riot. Maybe not as funny as something like Nichijo or Azumanga Daio, but nonetheless a stellar comedy anime, and thus far the only show this season that I've kept up with weekly. Oh yeah, I'm talking about the anime by the way. I haven't read the manga, but boy am I tempted to once this anime finishes airing. But what makes it so funny? The answer lies in how geniusly written MASH is as a protagonist. And I don't wanna be a low star anymore Been a year or two and I still can't get score It's the worst that I can't get wins in the end I guess I need a carry from some friends So please do not- From the show's premise to its themes, MASH doesn't fit in anywhere, and that's by design. MASH enrolls in what is very clearly a parody of Hogwarts, fit with its own sorting Skeleton, Walmart Quidditch, and houses that I'll never remember the names of. But despite being in Magic High School, MASH is biologically incapable of using magic. However, due to plot that I'll get into later, MASH can't let anyone know that he can't use magic. Thus, much of the show is about MASH passing tests of magical ability using nothing but wit, gains, and a couple dozen thousand cream puffs. What makes MASH's antics so funny is that through his very nature, he completely breaks the setting. Not only is he unable to tackle the problems he's confronted with in the ways that this society has deemed proper, but the bizarro methods through which he uses his muscles in lieu of magic are often completely reality-breaking and absurd. You seemingly can't throw anything his way without him doing something you couldn't possibly expect. Give him a magic maze to go through? Good luck, he'll punch holes in the walls. Drag him into a grudge bee match? Weak shit. He'll literally learn to fly on the spot by Mario butterfly kicking and get a new world record in the sport. School bullying? Monster Mash will give him the old graveyard smash by putting them six feet underground! As everyone and their grandmas have already pointed out, it's a similar idea to One Punch Man. Mash is a square peg in a world full of round holes. He fits in nowhere and does nothing correctly. And yet that's why he's funny. His existence is one giant middle finger to the world around him. And it's great! What makes it even better, though, is that MASH is completely deadpan throughout all of this, and a move once again similar to One Punchy Boy. He's not even surprised that he's able to just straight up fly. MASH is not the one reacting to his own antics. It is always up to the setting to react to him. MASH's unfazed attitude is not only another layer of contrast that makes the show even funnier, but it also helps reinforce the idea that MASH is the odd one out in this world. His antics are normal to him, it's only abnormal to the people surrounding him. I also just find his deadpan demeanor endearing. It's Gap Moe or something. It's not even like his strength is where the jokes end for M.A.S.H. His brain is white noise. One of the funniest jokes in the show, and I am genuinely so sorry for spoiling this, but I have to talk about it. The sorting skeleton can read people's thoughts when they touch its horn, yeah? So right as the skeleton is monologuing about how he's never not known which house to sort people into, and always has a keen eye for their thoughts, M.A.S.H. grabs its horn, and the skeleton is completely taken aback. Because canonically, Mash's head is completely empty except for the thought of cream puffs. I kid you not, this scene was physically painful to me because I was laughing so hard. But would you believe me if I said that there's still more to talk about with Mash? The guy also has a very strong sense of justice, and a distinct moral code. Mash will save people when they're in danger, but more importantly, if you're A, someone who Mash views as a bad person, and B, make him angry, you will have hell to pay. In a series about physical strength, it makes sense that Mash is willing to get physical against those he deems as corrupt. He ain't no pacifist, which adds more texture to an already engaging character. But won't just seeing Mash doing crazy stuff with his muscles every episode get boring, I hear you ask? 
I'm glad you asked, straw man. Luckily, Mashal has a vast array of side characters that it's been building up throughout its runtime, and while I'm not particularly invested in any of them so far, they have tons of potential, like OnlyFans make Simp Cuck, otherwise known as Likeable Kazuya, dropping the most relatable lines of dialogue in anime history, or the self-proclaimed Siscon who keeps having to clarify that he is not a lollicon but rather just a Siscon, despite Mash always calling him a lollicon. It's okay, Lance. Every day, I feel your struggle. And my wife, Lemon Irvine. She's clumsy to the point she done tripped and fell all over this show's chances of passing the Bechdel test. Because I don't think she's had a single scene past episode 2 where she hasn't simped over MASH. The supporting cast members all add their own unique little thing to the show, and I think the show will give them more focus and make me properly invested in them as it exhausts a lot of its jokes for MASH. But it's not just the side characters that keep this show from getting stale. For you see, this show has genuine, honest-to-god themes. In the world of Mashal, non-magic users are not allowed to exist. However, despite lacking magical abilities at birth, Mash was able to slip through the cracks. Regro Burndead found him abandoned by his family at birth, and decided to raise Mash as his own. Weak magic users are oppressed and scoffed at until they're at the brink of suicide. Those who get sicknesses that remove their magical abilities fear they'll have to be turned into the government. The elite in this world are not portrayed as good people. It's not that being an elite in this world automatically means you're evil, although it certainly seems like that at times. It's that the system allows for exploitation. Elite blood is valued. If you are the child of a family in power, you are essentially free to do whatever without punishment. Or even worse, hold your own status above people's head and use that as leverage to get them to do what you want. Elites stay among themselves, disdainful of those in lesser positions of power, and apparently even have horrifying cult-like tendencies at times. This world is obsessed with power and influence. People with biologically superior magical abilities more often find themselves in positions of authority because mastery of magic determines one's status within the world. Inversely, those with lackluster magical abilities are socially acceptable to bully. The world is rigged such that exploitative assholes getting in power is kind of an inevitability, and because they never get punished, the cycle of exploitation is self-perpetuating. The show's narrative follows Mash going up against this society. Mash is at the rock bottom of the totem pole in this world, to the point where his very existence isn't allowed. Through some fluke, however, Mash is given the opportunity to prove himself through a seemingly meritocratic system, where he can gain enough gold coins at school to become the Divine Visionary and be seen as accepted by God, thereby also joining the Bureau of Magic and presumably making things better for everyone in this world. Yet even then, students from elite families conspire to ensure that one of them ends up the Divine Visionary, and try to take coins from the less powerful through magical duels. Mashal's narrative is about a broken society. It's a world with a horribly divided upper and lower class, and the story displays what happens when the upper crust of society has unchecked power. It shows how the rich and powerful look out for their own interests, and how they conspire to ensure that the systems keeping them rich and powerful remain unchanged. It's a... Shit, how do I see eugenics without coming off as pretentious? But the thing is, this show's society is literally into hardcore eugenics. Those who are considered biologically inferior due to lacking magic are strategically killed by law so that the general populace can stay as magical as possible, with the strong implication being that a lack of magic either is or is thought to be a hereditary trait. I don't think I can reasonably give this any other label than eugenics, and I think this is all an incredibly interesting story to tell. At the risk of once again sounding pretentious, it's a political story, although to be fair, I think silly comedy scenes are way higher on this show's list of priorities than any political message it tells. Still, it at least gets my noggin joggin, and it lends the story a certain level of intrigue and weight that makes it feel like more than just a bundle of laughs. The thing is, this also makes the comedy scenes even better. You want to see Mash defy the society's expectations. You want to see him create a square hole for himself. You want Mash to eat the rich, or whatever the hell. 
The show is very cohesive in this regard. The comedy and the drama are connected through their themes, which makes the show just that much more compelling. One last thing real quick. I love this show's art style. It reminds me of Assassination Classroom. I miss Assassination Classroom. The animation quality has its moments, but on the whole is only just passable enough to not be distracting. And yet the art style makes the show look genuinely good because of how much it just resonates with me. This is also the same reason why I don't completely hate Assassination Classroom's animation. I'm not sure if Masha will end up being my favorite show of this season. Oshinoko absolutely gives it a run for its money, and Magical Destroyers is good in a weird way. I've heard Heavenly Delusion is pretty baller. There's also like, four good rom-coms this season. Like, dude, I've seen anime seasons where there weren't even four good shows, period. But of all the good anime to watch in this here spring 2023, Mashal is a stellar pick, and one that I think you all should go watch. But admittedly, there is one show that absolutely clears every other anime this season, without any doubt. Mashal, Oshinoko, Jigokudaku, they all pale in comparison to the absolute GOAT, what is perhaps the greatest anime ever made, I got a cheat skill in another world and became unrivaled in the real world too! Oh then tell me Sean O'Farrell, tell me why you hurry so Hush a woke, hush and listen, and his cheeks were all aglow Yo, the vid's over. Real quick, I wanna shout out my novel, Lori's Always Perfect Volume 1. The full thing ain't out yet, but you can read the first 8 chapters for free by clicking the link in the description. And now, patrons. Alvilan, CJ, Ice Phoenix, Ijo Saigai, Izzy, Jackson Keith, Jose Ramirez, Karen Chan, KD Pack, Minibomb456, Neon Manta, Nix Alexandra, Sophia, Bidufus, Dr. Awu, Froset, Loganos, Mike Samen, Rice Shower, and Timer. Thank you for your patronage.